Okay, social psychology students, welcome to Advanced Topics and Research Methods. I assume that you've read the uh, section uh, in Baron Byrne and Branscombe uh, in Chapter 1 about research methods. Now we're going to talk about some specific stuff and also go over some of the material they I think it's probably best to uh, give a research example uh, to ground uh, what we're going to be talking about. So here's one. A study was conducted to investigate the hypothesis that watching televised violence increases aggression in children. 54-year-olds were randomly assigned to watch either a violent or a nonviolent television program in, their class, in a classroom in their daycare center. Uh, the children who watched the violent cartoons, or cartoon, excuse me, uh, did uh, the experiment in the morning, and then the children who watched the nonviolent cartoons did the experiment in the afternoon. <coughs> After watching the program, the children were observed while they engaged in 30 minutes of free, free play. Blah. An observer watched for aggressive acts and recorded all such acts that occurred. So this is a very typical experiment. Now let's move on. When you are exposed to that, even if you know nothing about research methods, there's some questions that immediately should pop to mind. Uh, what do they mean by violent versus nonviolent cartoons? Uh, I may define a violent cartoon differently than you define violent. Uh, I may define a violent cartoon as something like Power Rangers or you know Japanese anime where you may say that a violent cartoon is when Gargamel is threatening the Smurfs which is really not that physical at all. You see there's differences. So we really need to know what they mean by violent. Also uh, they're measuring aggressive acts. How are they measuring that? What do they mean by aggressive acts? And then also what in their experiment will allow them to test their hypothesis? So these are the issues that you would immediately think of, even if you don't know much about research methods. To answer uh, the first two questions uh, that I just posed, uh, we rely on operational definitions. An operational definition is a clearly defined set of procedures for measuring, and when we're measuring it's usually a dependent variable, or manipulating, and when we're manipulating we're usually talking about an independent variable, the construct of interest. To be a good operational definition, it must specify the procedure precisely enough to allow replication. That is, after hearing it, I should be able to do exactly what you did, that's replication. And also, another thing they talk about is that the relationship between the operational definition and the construct must make sense. It, it should be reasonably obvious to people. That's what they mean by make sense. In the experimental example, there's three operational definitions. A violent cartoon, nonviolent cartoon, and aggressive acts. So for example, here's how you could go about forming an operational definition. And these would be very appropriate operational definitions. Uh, for a violent cartoon, uh, it's uh, an episode of Dragon Ball Z, or excuse me, for a nonviolent cartoon, it's uh, an episode of Dragon Ball Z, Season 7, Episode 195. It's a five minute clip from three minutes and 45 seconds into the program where they're sitting around talking about the, platel, the battle that's going to happen and trying to figure out a strategy. That's a op good operational definition. Now that I've described this to you, you could go out and replicate that part of the experiment exactly. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Also, even if you're not interested in replicating the experiment, you may be interested in, well, what do I call nonviolent? So you can actually look this up and watch it and see what I mean by nonviolent. You may disagree, and that may be the basis of a new experiment. And an example of a violent cartoon would be, or the operational definition would be, uh, episode 199, a five minute clip starting at one minute into the show. And this is involving the battle of Goku and Pai Ku Han. And uh, again, you could look this up and watch it and see what you felt about how well I defined in my experiment what a violent cartoon is. Another thing is I'm using clips from the same TV show, so I have an element of control. That is, 
uh, I'm not switching uh, TV shows. I'm not switching genres. Uh, you know, everything is basically the similar except the violence or the nonviolence. Well, not everything, but you can think about that and maybe talk to me. Also, another operational definition is aggressive behaviors. And in the experiment, we would go about saying that any unwanted physical contact is an aggressive behavior. And that's a little vague, so we'll actually uh, you know, give uh, the observer some very specific things. Poking, grabbing, hitting, kicking, pushing, and shoving. All these things are, should be coded as an aggressive act. Uh, however, we should tell them that contact in a sports or game is not aggressive because uh, when you play a game, you give permission to be physically contacted, so therefore uh, that's not aggressive. And again, now that I've described this to you, you could take this and go off and uh, you know, observe behaviors pretty much in the way uh, I did in this experiment, in this hypothetical experiment. I'm not an aggression researcher. Now we're moving on to the second issue I raised, which is how do you go about testing the hypothesis? And the way that we go about testing the hypothesis is varying certain variables and seeing the results of those variations. And so we have to first identify those you know, variables that are being varied in the experiment. And to begin, let's talk about constants. Constants are things that are the same throughout the experiment. Uh, the constants in this experiment, the classroom, it's the same classroom. The length of the video, it's the same length. The type, it's the same program. The same schoolyard, the same length of observation. And the same type of kids. Now, you may be saying to yourself, no, you randomly assigned uh, 25 kids to one condition and 25 kids to another. That's correct. However, the whole point of random assignment is that it uh, creates equivalent groups, groups which are similar on the major important characteristics to each other. That's the whole point of random assignment. So when I say the same type of kids, I'm actually correct. Uh, because we randomly assigned uh, you know, in the experiment, we have a group of 25 kids who are relatively similar to the other group of 25 kids. So that's a constant. Uh, we can talk about that later. However, there are certain things that vary in this experiment. Uh, one is the content of the video, violent versus nonviolent. Another thing that varies is the number of aggressive acts each student will commit. Uh, a student could commit none, or they could commit, you know, 30, or if they're really crazy, 60. Ooh, stay away from that kid. Also, another thing that varies is the time of day. Some students are tested in the morning, some in the afternoon. Now that we've identified uh, the variables and the constants, now we need to specifically identify the different types of variables. One type of variable uh, are the independent variables. Independent variables defined as the variable assumed to take the causal role. It's causing something else to change, or it may. Uh, that's why I say assume. Also, this variable is manipulated by the researcher. Uh, when I say manipulated, I mean controlled by. So the researcher can determine who gets what. Uh, in our experimental example, uh, you know, looking at the description, it's obvious that the thing that's taking the causal role is violent versus nonviolent cartoons. A violent cartoon will cause aggression in children, or may cause aggression in children. Also, when we want to look at manipulated, uh, what does the researcher have control over? The researcher has control over who gets what video. So the videos are the independent variables. Uh, another way to identify independent variables to look for groups. Researchers often will create groups or conditions or levels uh, to help them manipulate the variable. Uh, also look for the terms either or. Subjects were given either a violent uh, cartoon to watch or a nonviolent cartoon to watch. Uh, conditions or treatments, those terms often pop up. Another type of variable we see in experiments are dependent variables. 
the dependent variable is the variable assumed to be influenced. That is, it's being influenced or affected by the independent variable, or maybe. Uh, this variable is not manipulated, but it's just observed. We observe what the outcome is. So when we apply this to our example, what's being observed, what's being observed is the uh, subject's behavior on the playground, the number of aggressive acts, and that's our dependent variable. Also, if you go back to the statement, you'll notice that we believe that violent cartoons cause aggression in children. So what's being influenced is aggression in children. Words to look for to help you identify. When we talk about we measured this, or we observed this, or we gave the uh, subjects a scale, that more than not, not all the time, but more than not, indicates a dependent variable. And our third type of variable is an extraneous variable. Extraneous literally means outside, so we're talking about a variable that's outside of the experiment. And often it's described as a nuisance factor which is uncontrolled. Uh, to say that uh, something is controlled uh, means that we hold something constant it's the same, it's a constant. So a nuisance factor is something other than the independent variable or the dependent variable which is varying. Because the only two variables we're allowed to have in an experiment are an independent variable and a dependent variable. If anything else varies, it shouldn't be, but if it does, it's a nuisance variable. And one final thing that's important is we control things by holding it constant from condition to condition. And one way we can hold things constant is the idea of random assignment, where we can randomly assign uh, you know, subjects to one condition and to another. And then we assume that since we randomly assign them to conditions, everything is going to be constant in terms of the subjects, because the group of subjects in one condition are pretty much the same uh, as the group of subjects in another condition. There are no systematic differences. And that gets us in the ballpark of saying that we've hold this constant and uh, we've controlled it. So those are the, you know, more or less the three major variables we'll see in an experiment. Go back to our example and try to identify the IVs and the DVs and the EVs. Uh, I've already mentioned what the IV and the DV is. So what would the EV be then? the extraneous variable. Do that while you switch over to the next slideshow. And finally, what the heck is this? Well, you notice I had some pictures of bullies. This is the first thing that came up in a Google image search when I typed in schoolyard bully. I have no idea what this is about.